Good evening, morning, whatever time it is where you are in Media Readers. Um, I am here to record, here to tell you about our April book of the month, which is Nicole Krauss's The History of Love. Um, it's kind of interesting. I'm kind of proud of myself because I sort of joined this book club and I told myself, like, sometime Kate you're gonna get in this book club and you're gonna read a book and you're not gonna like it but you're gonna push through because that's why you do book clubs is to read things even if you don't necessarily like them I just didn't really expect it to be the second book uh, but more on that later um, the history of love is a romance ish novel. Uh, it's also kind of a historical fiction-ish thing uh, told from two perspectives. Uh, one is a sort of the story of this Polish guy named Leo Gursky who immigrates to America and has a kind of sorry existence. Um, in Poland he writes a book about love which his friend later publishes in Spanish and makes lots of money. Uh, it also follows the story of a young girl named Alma who's trying to find information about her namesake, which uh, comes from this book that Leo Gursky has written, which is called The History of Love. Um, I guess I'll read you a selection like I did last time. So this is from one of Alma's sections near the beginning of the book. There is an, an, a photograph of my mother that no one has ever seen. In the fall, my mother went back to England to start university. Her pockets were full of sand from the lowest place on earth. She weighed 104 pounds. There's a story she sometimes tells about the train ride from Paddington Station to Oxford when she met a photographer who was almost completely blind. He wore dark sunglasses and said that he damaged his retinas a decade ago on a trip to Antarctica. His suit was perfectly pressed and he held his camera in his lap. He said he saw the world differently now and it wasn't necessarily bad. He asked if he could take a picture of her. When he raised up the lens and looked through it, my mother asked what he saw. The same thing I always see, he said. Which is? A blur, he said. Then why do it, she asked. In case my eyes ever heal, he said. So I'll know what I've been looking at. In my mother's lap there was a brown paper bag with a chopped liver sandwich my grandmother had made for her. She offered the sandwich to the almost completely blind photographer. Aren't you hungry, he asked. She told him that she was, but she'd never told her mother that she hated chopped liver, and it eventually became too late to tell her, having said nothing for years. The train pulled into Oxford Station and my mother got off, leaving behind her a trail of sand. I know there is a moral to this story, but I don't know what it is. So I picked this passage because I think it's a pretty good exemplar of the, the style of writing that this book employs a lot, um, and also a good example of why I don't really like the writing style in this book because and maybe I'm just really cynical, uh, I look forward to seeing what other people have to say about this. I'm actually recording my video early so that I can't wimp out later and pretend like I liked this book when I know that I didn't. Um, so this book sort of employs this writing style where it, it sounds like it's saying things that are really profound, but it's not actually saying things that are really profound, you know? Maybe you don't know, maybe you don't agree. Comments, give me, tell me what you think. Um, yeah, I just really didn't buy into this. And speaking of Alma, because this was one of the sections written by young Alma, I guess as I'll call her, I just thought that Alma was an extremely unrealistic 14-year-old. Like, when you're 14, you're in the 10th grade. And 10th grade Alma is trying really, really hard to find her mother a husband, which I feel like is something you know is not appropriate when you're in the 10th grade. So I didn't really like Alma. I thought Leo Gursky was actually really creepy, and a lot of the stuff that he did that was supposed to be really romantic I thought was actually just stalkerish, so that was really unpleasant and I didn't like it. I don't think it's okay to go to the hospital and when people are in comas and they can't say that they don't know you and don't want anything to do with you when you lie to nurses and say that you're their husband and sit there and talk to them like they can, you know, hear you or want to hear you or, you know, things. Uh, I did really like Bird, who is uh, young Alma's younger brother, who happens to think he might be a messiah. I thought that was a really interesting subplot. I liked Leo Gursky's upstairs neighbor. Um, I sort of liked Isaac, I guess, even though we never really met him. 
I really liked the little spin-off where Leo Gursky goes to try to find the book that his friends published thinking it's under his name and he finds a book called The Incredible Adventures of Frankie Toothless Girl Wonder, which I actually would have really liked reading as a book within a book because I thought the history of love book within a book was really contrived and I didn't like it. Unfortunately, this book just wasn't for me. Uh, it was still a good experience. I'm a little disappointed that I actually bought it because um, I'm not going to read it again. So maybe in the future, if books don't sound like books I want, I might get them from the library. Lesson learned. So I want to know what you think. If you thought that History of Love was a great book and I'm totally wrong, I want to hear it in the comments. If you really liked Leo Gursky, if you had some different thoughts about Alma, if whatever you thought about this book, I want to see it in the comments or in the comments of other videos, the people before or after me. Uh, with that, I guess I will see you on the 1st of May, because next month is my month, it's my book. Um, we will be reading Fun Home, a tragic comedy, graphic novel, and I'll tell you a lot more about it on the 1st. Until then, uh, keep turning those pages, bookworms. DFTBA.